did I do wrong? Elden Ring is hard. Did you know Elden Ring is hard? If you're new to Souls games like I am, it's very hard. But I want to win, my friends. Or at least beat Margaret the Fell Omen, who at my level might as well be the final boss. And there's only one way for a Souls noob like me to do it find every shortcut and cop out I can. So if you're tired of tutorial videos showing you how to be competent, to do well at things, and take pride in your accomplishments, you tried the best, now try the rest! Stick with me, kid, and I'll show you how to cheese your way through Elden Ring. Of course! But first, Warning, location and plot spoilers throughout the video. Play the game first if you don't want spoilers. This video is primarily for entertainment purposes and should not be seen as an authoritative guide for how to play Elden Ring well or badly or both. Your experience will differ from mine and that's okay. Souls veterans, please don't be mad. My mother was the same. How dare you? The talk amongst Souls diehard seems to be that sorcery is too easy and it's for cowards. So a sorcery build it is. Taking the golden seed at the start will give you an extra flask charge, which means more magic. So it's a good idea to do this. Runes. Fighting the same few enemies repeatedly might be boring, but it's a great way to farm runes at the start of the game. Use targeting to check if there are any hidden enemies ahead. You're welcome. You can also find these golden runes in skulls that are dotted around the land. They're also dropped by some enemies. Unlike the runes you absorb by defeating enemies, you can't lose these golden runes when you die. I recommend using the runes you absorb primarily for leveling up, and keeping some of your golden runes to buy items and equipment as needed or use enough to top up your runes for leveling and keep the rest in reserve. Sometimes you'll find one of these piddly little nobles carrying a box with five grand inside. Look out for these wherever you can. But watch out, because some of these guys turn into bears and kill you, naturally. Hmm, nah, I'll leave him. Whatever your build, get the short bow on the beach near the starting area if you don't have one already. It doesn't do a huge amount of damage, but it has decent range, and crucially, you can fire it while sneaking. Getting the mighty shot Ashes of War and the Arrow's Reach Talisman will give you even more flexibility with it. P.S. There's a really nice crossbow in the basement of the Round Table Hold that you can get later. If we're going to learn the art of magic, we're going to need a teacher. Luckily, Sorceress Selen lives nearby in Waypoint Ruins. You'll have to beat this imposing boss to get to her though. Normally the game doesn't let you ride torrent inside ruins or any enclosed spaces, but for some reason you can here, so go nuts. With Pumpkinhead defeated, we can have a chat with Selen and learn some new spells. Tarnished, are we? You'll also want to meet Rena at the church nearest to the starting point. A pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. She'll give you the spirit calling bell, so you can summon spirits to help you in a fight. If you go to Summon Water Village and defeat this, uh, guy in a boat, you can get the Skeletal Militiamen summon. This is one of the best early game summons in my opinion, because if your skeleton pals get knocked down, they get up again. Provided your opponent doesn't land a final blow on them, of course. By using them to distract an enemy, you can deal tons of damage while not even having to worry too much about defense. Nice. Speak to Roderica once she arrives at the Round Table Hold and smithing master Hugh. Hugh will give her a job as a spirit tuner, meaning you can upgrade your summons by speaking to her. You'll need to raid catacombs for glove warp. I recommend upgrading the Skeletal Militia Men as soon as you can. Ashes of War are also a great way to boost your chances in combat. I recommend Vow of the Indomitable, a shield skill that makes you temporarily invincible. Great if there's an attack coming that you can't dodge. Put these foolish ambitions to rest. Visiting all the churches you can find is also a great idea. Find as many sacred tiers as you can. These increase your flask volume so it restores more HP and FP. Golden seeds, found at these baby herd trees, increase your number of flask uses. Again, lots of FP is essential for a magic build, so you'll want as many as you can find. It's also worth levelling up your intelligence as early as you can. Most of the best spells and staves in the game have a high intelligence requirement. Looking for sacred tears and golden seeds set me off exploring as much of the world as I could. Not just for them, but for power-ups, spells, ashes of war, and better weapons. Initially, the game seems to want you to finish Castle Stormvale before you go anywhere else, but where there's a will, there's a way. After wandering around, I soon found myself in scary and exciting new areas. Hey, do you find dragons intimidating? Well, lucky for you, these things are extremely territorial and won't chase you very far. Dragon on the bridge? Just run past it. Problem solved. I'm a lazy man, from soft, but surely it shouldn't be this easy. Oh. Not going that way. 
Elsewhere, in Laernia, you can find this cave with a new set of mage robes. About 25 hours into the game, I learned that you can sprint, which made short work of this gap. You'll also want to look for memory stones on your travels. There's an easy one to get along the northern edge of the Great Lake in Laernia. This will allow you to have an additional spell equipped. There are a bunch of these to find, and you can also buy one at the Round Table Hold. Reaching Margit can be difficult. There are quite a few enemies to get past. Thankfully, if you touch this Site of Grace just before this guy kills you, you'll respawn here with your runes right next to you. This works in a lot of situations where you're being pursued by enemies, by the way. And so, with many hours spent leveling up, exploring, and finding new items, and with the help of Sorcerer Rogier, Bonjour. I was finally ready to face Margit, the first main boss in Elden Ring. Well, after recording hours of footage for this playthrough, I somehow forgot to record the battle with Margit. Oops. Seriously though, I can't tell you how annoying this was after all the build-up. But I did beat him, as you can see here. It took a combination of all the stuff I've mentioned in this video, plus what felt like a hefty dose of luck, but I did it. And so, with my life's work completed, I was ready to hang up my wizard's hat and... I command thee... <laughs> Okay, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Of all that is golden. Uh -huh.